pressure gauge time. I just want to waffle on for a few minutes about the pressure gauge because I know people are waiting for a closer look at the components. Um, so firstly, a background about the idea to have the pressure gauge was I'd made the, uh, we'd made the CNC working model of the robot and it was making great coffee and just out of interest I thought okay let's see what kind of pressure that's producing and so I went to my lathe made a new piston this is from brass and also this was the piston where I was testing out to see whether I could get our existing part here whether we could make use of that so on this I drilled a, a anyway I put in a, a push connect fitting from Legris and wow it's amazing it was making or produce, capable of producing 8, 9, 10 bar pressure and I thought oh that's really good um, so I used that for six months and it became a really good tool to give feedback on what's happening so eventually we thought okay then maybe some other crazy people would like pressure gauge as well so that's how this came about and by that stage we'd already made this die cast aluminium tooling um, so that's why it's sort of an add-on feature and you know I've, I've read comments about why you haven't incorporated the, the pressure gauge into the main body and tidied it up a couple of reasons for that first of all this die cast tooling is extremely expensive for a niche product such as this if you're doing a hundred thousand two hundred thousand units a year it's fine yeah you, you can accept that but if you're doing a one two thousand units you know there's just no way you could justify that unless you are um, you know you got some venture capital backers like Juicero or something like that you just anyway um, so the idea was to have this as an add-on um, and so you have to remember you cannot put this in here because the piston is going up and down inside because I had to make use of what I had we already made this tool we already finalized the design so this piston is going up in the cavity of this body and it will hit this pressure gauge and then to be honest even if you moved it up here you've still got moving parts behind there you've still got connections I, I just don't physically know how you would put this there and then you'd have to get in and connect it it got very complicated very quickly and that's why we keep it as simple as possible so the idea was we have it here unclip it, it's just fixed on with a couple of uh, set screws yep so the pressure reading comes from a, the face of the piston here um, and like I said there's a, a push connect fitting in there these are from Italy there you go so that goes in there, sealed with a Viton O-ring and then we're just using industry standard 4mm OD pneumatic tube. This is from Parker Legris. It's rated up to 20 bar pressure and over 100 degrees C. So for our purposes, this is more than plenty. Actually, you may have noticed this first piston did not have the hole. I was going to have two pistons for the pressure gauge without it. Simplify it. Everyone will have this pre-drilled with the 1.8 BSP thread. If you don't have the gauge system, there'll be a blanking plug. Right? The magic hole. <laughs> now, looking back, this seemed absolutely ridiculous and funny. But I was looking at a way because it was so important to me that the piston could travel down far enough to get a double shot of coffee in one go. 
I've mentioned it in every video, if you do this pump, the second time you do it, the pup oh, it gets sucked up and, yeah, and it makes the worst coffee you've ever seen on the second pump. So that's why we don't do it. And I wanted to make it a one, one time push. So that hole, <laughs> that hole meant I was able to push the piston down as far as I could based on messing about with the, the lever arms and the connecting rod length. And it would not, you know, and it wouldn't smash that. So, ta-da, the simplest solutions are the best. So that hole solved a huge problem for me, yeah? Prevents you from smashing up the dispersion screen pin and it allows you to extract the double shot. Like I said, keep it simple, that's all you need to do. Right. So the bracket, oh okay, so the system fits together. So I'll show you, push it there, okay. So this is a, a longer version of what it is. So there's a connection between the piston and the pressure gauge, doo doo doo, goes up there. Yeah, the other thing is the piston's going up and down in the main body and you need a flexible joint between the two. You need, you can't have a copper pipe for example, you yeah? know. So what I needed was the pressure gauge to move the same distance as the piston. So they would both go together. And so putting on the arm was a perfect solution. And that's how it came about. And that's why it's not incorporated in there. And it's just so simple. You know, sure, I'm sure in, in you know, if we had all the money in the world, we could change the design, the robot, shove it in there blend it in and it would look great but that would be a pain to service a pain to install and yeah I, I wouldn't want to do that so we put it there uh, and also you know not everyone's going to want this system and so to have a the, have a tube sticking out the back and everything that was quite fun it was sort of like the robots you know the robots I don't know artery or something like that you know it's it's part of its you know having that tube sticking out was was, was good it's a good solution and oh about the pressure gauge itself a few people have asked what happens if it blocks well I've been using it for a couple of years and nothing's happened yet so pull the fitting push it pull the tube oops yeah disconnect it then you can either I guess you blow down it or run it under the tap to flush out the tube. Yeah, push it back and then you're back in business. There will, however, be if I bring the camera down, a screen, a filter screen. I'll try here. We've ordered it, but it hasn't arrived. So there'll be a screen here just as a sort of final step to protect the gauge. That'll go in there those sandwiched together, hold the screen in, prevent any big bits going in, blocking the gauge. The gauge is just a simple board on tube gauge and it's very small. These are the smallest gauges we could find and that was the other tough thing. Finding a small gauge for this, but this is 25 millimeter in diameter which is very small. A standard single uh, um, scale Italian gauge is about 40 millimeter, I think, and then the bigger size 60 millimeter. So they're just enormous. I think this here is 45, so it would have looked really out of place. So this thing here, very small. We did the dial design last week, so we've got the 16 bar pressure, have the logo, whatever. Um, yeah, very good. Um, this gauge, where did it come from? I can't remember now. I think we've, we've ordered it from a fire, extinct, a fire extinguisher company. 
Because if you look at the fire extinguishers, they have very small gauges and thought, ooh, that looks good. Ah, oh, yeah, I found, a, I found a fire extinguisher in the recycle area downstairs. So I took out the gauge and that was pretty cool. So I brought it back and then we thought, ah, oh, let's find the fire extinguisher companies. Maybe they'll, anyway, got there in the end. It's cute. So the gauge is a non-serviceable item. I'm going to have to thread lock that to the bracket or, or the fitting. So if it ever did break down, um, you'll probably end up breaking the fitting to remove this. So you, you wouldn't need to remove it anyway. But um, yeah, it's an inexpensive gauge and we'll have them. Um, yeah, very cute. The bracket, <laughs> the bracket is just enormous. Yeah, it's made out of stainless steel investment cast again. Um, yeah, I was a bit, I was asleep. We, we eventually, uh, originally, the arms were aluminium and I did an alum, I did an aluminium bracket, which we had CNC in uh, aluminium. Okay, then it became this, and then the gauge went in. I did it, I don't know why I did it so, oh, I did it so big, so it sort of blended in. It didn't look different. And um, so when we changed the stainless steel arms, we sent out the bracket to our stainless steel casting, and <laughs> I forgot to adjust the, the, the 3D model. The, sorry, the 3D, the CAD drawing. And we, we, we ended up with this enormous, chunky, um, complete and utter overkill for what it is. It's holding up a 10, 20 gram pressure gauge, but this thing could probably lift a truck. It's just, yeah, never mind. Always double check your drawings at least 10 times. Yeah, I normally do, but this time, because it was a bracket, I thought, i just send the bracket out, it's fine. And then when I got it back, I went, Oh, maybe I should have adjusted the thickness, yeah? That thing will lift a truck. Never mind. It's good though. Works very well. Simple and effective. Two set screws, hold it in, done. So that's the, the inner workings of the pressure gauge system. I hope it's clearer now. Again, I say this all the time about the robot. Keep it simple and that's always the best way. Don't overcomplicate things. Even though my videos go on for half an hour about the tiniest details. 